It could have been possibly the worst crash, but in my mind, the 747 saved our lives. Incredibly, Amelia's 747 was repaired and went back into service. My love affair continued, and I did enjoy flying her from time to time. Then all of a sudden, she disappeared. Amelia learned of the fate of her jumbo, now 40 years old, and renamed after Pan Am's founder, One T Trip. She ended up apparently in South Korea as some kind of restaurant? How demeaning. Then I heard they finally dismantled her and she doesn't exist anymore. Why couldn't they have kept an airplane like her, you know, for all posterity? The Jumbo Revolution was now in full swing. But Boeing had not recovered financially from the massive investment it had made. And it was about to be dealt another blow. Everybody, I think, was concerned. Nobody took it for granted they'd have a job tomorrow morning. It was that palpable. In May 1971, the project that was supposed to make the 747 obsolete was scrapped. On grounds of noise and pollution, environmentalists persuaded Congress to cut funding for the ambitious supersonic airliner. Boeing cut its workforce by nearly two-thirds. 60,000 jobs were lost. Somebody who thankfully had a sense of humor when he left uh, put up a big board down by the airport that said, you know, the last guy to leave Seattle, please put out the lights. And, you know, it wasn't funny. That was a bittersweet kind of a, a, a piece of humor. It was a close call, but as more orders rolled in, the plane that was supposed to be the underdog saved Boeing. British Airways regret to announce a delay to departure of this flight due to late serviceability of the aircraft. Soon it had become part of our everyday life. Yeah, I'll have it ready. Actually, it's not too bad, but the uh, old M4 was a bit crowded this morning, I can tell you that. Through the 80s, airlines like British Airways encouraged passengers to travel to ever more exotic locations with the promise of cheap fares. And by the early 90s, the numbers of passengers carried by jumbos was no longer in the millions, but the billions. The 747 had shrunk the world in a way that no one could ever have imagined. But by now, this child of the 70s was in need of a facelift. Boeing completely overhauled the jumbo with the introduction of the new 747-400. Advanced computer systems eliminated the flight engineer. Little winglets smoothed turbulence at the tip of the wings, saving fuel. With extra tanks, the 747 could now travel a third of the way around the planet without stopping. The improvements made the Jumbo the all-time favorite of crews. Among them, celebrity pilot John Travolta. The 747 uh, rated on a, a 1 to 10 scale it has to be a 10. As a Qantas ambassador, Travolta was able to realize a lifelong ambition, to learn to fly a 747. But his instructor didn't make it easy. He threw a, a doozy at me. He killed two engines. I had hydraulic problems. I had electric problems. I had, I had about five major failures, uh, plus Others, <laughs> instrument failures, whatever. Travolta landed safely, and the experience didn't dent his love for the 747. In fact, quite the reverse. You're dealing with a pedigree of aircraft, and you feel it when you're flying it. You know, you you know you have an airplane beneath you. You know, you it's solid state, if you will. You know, you, it's majestic. There's a saying: if it's not Boeing, I ain't going. Qantas offered Travolta his own 747, 
but he reluctantly had to turn it down. I loved it. I was so impressed that I was being offered it, but I'm not a sheikh or, you know, uh, I don't have this kind of money to support that kind of plane. At half a billion dollars plus, a personal 747 may be too expensive for John Travolta, but there are mega-rich who can afford their own jumbo flying palace. Greenpoint Technologies offers the Aerolift, which takes you directly from your car into the aircraft, and eight private suites in the loft area. To date, 12 of these pimped aircraft have been sold. The names of those who can afford the half billion dollar plus price tag are kept strictly confidential. With its wide body and massive capacity, the 747 has proved endlessly adaptable. For nearly 35 years, Jumbo's piggybacked the space shuttles, returning them to the Kennedy Space Center. The Evergreen Tanker is the world's largest fire extinguisher. This Jumbo can drop 20,000 gallons of fire retardant over a swathe of land four miles long. And this 747 has on board the world's largest airborne astronomical observatory, NASA's SOFIA. At 45,000 feet, the thin atmosphere offers views of the universe not possible from ground-based telescopes. Jumbos have also been adapted to become warplanes. This is the experimental YAL-1 airborne laser designed to fry enemy missiles at a distance of several hundred miles. But there is one 747 that is the most recognized aircraft in the world. Air Force One. Wherever this plane goes around the world when it carries our president, it's a visible symbol of the United States. It shows what we can do as Americans. Inside is a mix of secret communication systems, offices and suites for the president and his staff. It can carry a full press corps and even has its own fully equipped hospital. All of us that flew the 747 in the military were, uh, you know, we, we, we developed a love for the aircraft. It was just the perfect machine. This is not only a flying White House, it's also a military aircraft. Self-defense on the aircraft, can't really talk about, but there are other classified modifications for the aircraft to allow the president to survive in a nuclear environment. Air Force One costs nearly $180,000 an hour to fly and is lovingly looked after by a team of 100. It had to be hand polished every time it came in after a mission because it had to be perfect. You represent the United States of America, but the other part is you're representing the Boeing 747, and it was a, just a, an immaculate aircraft. Air Force One is now over 20 years old, and the US government is searching for a replacement. Boeing may just have the perfect plane for the job, a new 747. In February 2011, Boeing rolled out the 747-8 Intercontinental. There to see this latest incarnation was the father of the 747, Joe Sutter. 747-8 shows how the basic architecture of the initial airplane was right because it looks just like the original airplane. But the thing that annoys me a little bit as I talked to the pilots that fly it, and they used to tell me that the 747-400 was their favorite airplane. Now they're saying the 747-8's their favorite airplane. Boeing is eager to boast about the Dash 8's latest advances. The 747-8 is really an entirely new aircraft. By far the most fuel efficient aircraft in aviation today. 
This wing is completely new, and it is a wing that results in very minimum drag, even at flying at very high speeds. While Boeing can't claim it is the largest, it is still the longest and the fastest. In test flights, it came within eight miles per hour of going supersonic. It is also ultra quiet. We've had control towers uh, not realize the aircraft has taken off because they didn't hear it. And when you get on the airplane, I think it's just absolutely stunning. You know that this is a 747, but it's not like any 747 you've ever seen. But for all their boasts, the order books for the Dash 8 are pretty near empty. Airlines have been looking elsewhere to replace their now aging fleet of 747s. Is this the beginning of the end for the Jumbo? A serious rival has been Airbus's Super Jumbo, the A380. With two decks and a wider body, it can carry another 150 passengers. But the real threat comes from a whole new generation of aircraft with only two engines. Aeroplanes like Boeing's own 787 Dreamliner. These can fly as far as a 747, but because they take smaller numbers, they don't need to use big airport hubs. Instead, they can take you direct to your international destination. Less hassle and cheaper all round. How do the original creators of the 747 view this threat to their baby? Two engines have done so well and have turned out to be such a success that they are very serious uh, uh, competition for any four-engined airplane. To me, it will still be around for a long time. But two-engine airplanes are more efficient than four-engine airplanes. And when we were putting this airplane together, four engines were flown because we didn't have the levels of engine reliability that we have today. Whatever happens, it's likely we are going to be flying 747s for many years to come. Meanwhile, it's estimated that at any single moment, around 100,000 people are seated high in the skies in a jumbo. Until you're in the ground, they will be flying, certainly. I don't see an end to when the 747 flies. I don't think the 747 is going anywhere because there are too many of them and there's too much investment in its future. So I think we're going to see them probably through my lifetime. It will go out of service maybe 50 years from now. Who knows? When the time does come, when they're no longer flying, I think we'll all miss them very greatly. The 747 was built in just 28 months and against all the odds. Its engineers take pride that their creation will be looked at with wonder well into the future. I've always felt that the 747 was my airplane. It's part of me and I'm part of it. <laughs> That's the way I like to feel about it. The proud feeling that I have is that we did a hell of a good job designing a safe airplane that the pilots love to fly and little old ladies like to fly on it. So it's turned out to be quite a success.